the sparkling water market has been dominated by one brand. But an upstart Canadian company is hoping to make headway. I'm Erin from TechGadgetsCanada.com and Sparkle lets you make carbonated water, but it works nothing like its competition. Sparkle doesn't use carbon dioxide tanks. Instead, it uses small sachets to create the carbon dioxide gas more naturally. You can also carbonate more liquids than just water. You can use juice or add fruits. You could even carbonate wine. There's a bunch of other differences in this machine, and we're going to take a look at how it works, what sets Sparkle apart from its competition, and most importantly, how the water is. An early heads up that if you end up liking this video and finding it helpful to please hit that like button and give me a sub since it does help me keep making more videos that I hope everyone out there can watch, enjoy, and learn from. What makes Sparkle different? There are a few things that set it apart from its competitors. First, you'll need to plug it in. Second, it uses small two-part sachets to create the carbon dioxide necessary to bubble your water. Third, it lets you carbonate water with things like fruit or herbs inside, and you can carbonate tea or juice, which you're not supposed to do in a soda stream. Fourth, you can choose five different levels of carbonation. Another key difference? Sparkle takes longer to carbonate a bottle of water thanks to its more natural processes. Let's dig in on Sparkle's unique carbonation process. You'll add the two-part sachet to the machine and close the lid. There's a water tank in the back that will mix with the sachets when things are ready to go. When you're ready, fill up a special Sparkle bottle with tap water or filtered water. Put in your carbonator and close that lid firmly, then lock the bottle into place with that handle. When you hear that sound, you can choose one of the five carbonation settings. And once you hit the start button, the carbonator powder that you've put in the top here is gonna mix with the water in the back inside the machine, and it's going to create carbon dioxide gas, which is then going to be piped through your bottle. Watching the process is kind of mesmerizing. You'll see it bubbling for about three minutes, which feels like eons longer than other brands. When it's done, the machine chimes and you can release the handle and retrieve your bottle. A word of warning, because of the high pressure inside the machine, you cannot open the sachet chamber during carbonation. Only after the process is done is it safe. At that point, you can discard the byproduct of the carbonation process, which is merely water from the catch basin, then drink up. Onto the all important question, how does the sparkle water taste? And is there a taste difference between water carbonated with carbon dioxide gas from tanks and water carbonated with sachets of citric acid and baking soda? In short, yeah. It's kind of hard to put a finger on because of course water is generally tasteless, but sparkle water does taste a bit different than soda stream water. It tastes less canned, if that makes any sense. It kind of tastes a bit softer, and I'm just going to have a little sip here. It's kind of got, yeah, like I said, a softer taste. There might be just the slightest hint of citrus. I don't know if that's because I know there's supposed to be citric acid in here, and, and that's what I'm associating it to. Um, but the the soda stream water does taste kind of more, yeah, more canned is the word, almost like it's been in a stainless steel bottle or something. Now, with that said, honestly, both of these waters taste just fine, and those taste differences are really extremely subtle. If I serve these two to you blind, you probably wouldn't even notice which one was which, but to me, there does seem to be a subtle but not unpleasant difference. Sparkle allows you to add flavorings and herbs to your water before it's carbonated. You can do that with Sparkle because the carbonator nozzle, like the one here on the soda stream, never touches the beverage so there's no danger of contaminating it or getting it dirty. I feel like adding flavors and herbs beforehand also allows the flavors to be better infused and they end up tasting stronger right out of the gate instead of needing to wait. The fact that you can also carbonate other things means this is not just a sparkling water or seltzer machine. It is what you could call a drink station. I tried carbonating some red wine as well as some cold brew tea. You can also carbonate juices, so Sparkle is really versatile. Now, I've never liked Soda Stream's liquid soda flavorings by comparison. I always found them to be kind of loaded with chemicals and artificial tastes. So I've always just added my own flavors afterwards, of course. The other thing I've disliked about SodaStream is needing to go to the store, for example, to swap the cartridges in and out. 
So which one is more environmentally friendly, SodaStream or Sparkle? Kind of hard to say. SodaStream uses carbon dioxide tanks, but you do get credit for recycling them, though yes, you do usually have to drive to a store to do it. Sparkle's packs of Carbonator do leave you with small plastic garbage, which is too small for a lot of civic recycling programs to recycle, but you could also make your own Carbonator. Sparkle uses electricity where some SodaStream machines do not. So which one is better for the planet? I can't say for sure. Though I don't imagine Sparkle will endorse this, you can make your own carbonator, and that's probably more environmentally friendly than buying sachets. You can buy baking soda and citric acid in bulk. If you want to do this, check out my how-to video here on the YouTube channel. Overall, I like the Sparkle. The water tastes great, and the fact that you can carbonate more than just water is a big plus. Hmm. The machine is easy to use, though it does take a lot longer than a soda stream. There's no canisters to pick up or recycle with Sparkle, but yes, there is the plastic waste. But with that said, you can portion out your own bulk carbonator if that's what you want to do. Sparkle does also use electricity, so you do need a place to plug it in, and I am seriously lacking that in my home. My SodaStream needs no power, so I don't have to worry about it with that. The machine here costs about $100 Canadian and 90 packs of carbonators costs about $60. So that translates to about 65 cents per use or roughly about the same cost per use as using those cylinders since a 60 liter CO2 cartridge can be had for about 35 bucks and you get credit for bringing the old one back. Soda stream tanks are supposed to carbonate about 60 bottles. So that works out to about 60 cents per use. Ha, huh, that's a lot of numbers. You can find Sparkle on the company's website or they're also selling them on Amazon. If you want to read more about it, head over to techgadgetscanada.com where I've posted a full blog and you can ask me any questions you have about this device either there on the blog or as always here on the YouTube channel. I'm Erin, thanks so much for watching. If you liked this video and found it helpful, please hit that like button and give me a sub. Since it does help me keep making more videos, I hope everyone out there can watch, enjoy, and learn from. Until the next time, you can catch me on Twitter or Instagram. I'm at ErinLYYC. You can also always find me at facebook.com slash techgadgetscanada.